explicit sadhana kesa sadhana i want to sit here are you ready to take it here
you said long and short, the different classification altogether, right? Sorry? No, it's not like that. Yes, sir. What basis they are classified? Uh, because they are combined by mixing two vowels. Two vowels are mixed. Two vowels are mixed. So, uh, and uh, there is a phonetics also in that. Uh, it uses uh, two different phonetics, like uh, gutter, exactly. throat, that is single phonetic. Yes. But A, uh, A, I, uh, I, how, they use two different phonetics. Two different uh, I exactly don't remember right now. I'll show you now. <laughs> So, it's, as he said, simple vowels are those whose place of pronunciation is say through. When you say a, ah, you know the place of pronunciation. What is that? Throat. And the sound is called guttural. When you say a, ah. so it is its place of pronunciation is throat only, right? Whereas when you say a, when you say a, the sound starts from the throat, ends with the palate. So, starting place of pronunciation is different and the ending, from the ending place of pronunciation. So, two different places are there, two different sthanas are operated. Therefore, they are called conjunct. So, the basis of classification is the place of pronunciation. Ucharana sthana. Is all right? Based on the place of pronunciation. See, if you don't understand level 1, you please ask me. Okay? Somebody said, I am going fast. I mean, if I am going fast, you can stop me. I introduced all the vowels yesterday, right? So, if you find it difficult, please tell me. Today we will do. And one more thing is, uh, uh, for those who find it difficult to understand, you know, they want uh, extra class, I am available from after your uh, service. That is 245, 330, you are doing Seva. And 345 to 415, we can have extra <coughs> class, right? So your decision, if you want, you can let me know, you can have, right? 3.45 to 4.50, so it will be a tick for you, 2.30 to, uh, 2.45 to 3.30, and then T, then 3.45 to 4.15, then 4.50, wherever the class starts. So those who want extra help, assistance, yeah, we will do, in addition to the available tutors, okay? Okay. Now, uh, the conjunct verbs, the place of pronunciation, Pronunciation are different. That's two places of pronunciation. Beginning place and ending place. So, based on Ucharanasthanam, it is, vowels are classified into simple vowels and conjunct vowels. These are simple vowels are called Samana Swaraha. Sama means same. Same place of pronunciation. Is it a combination of two different places? No. There is no mixture. Therefore, it is called Amishra Swaraha. Mishra means mixture. Combination. A Mishra. No combination. So, Amishra Swaraha. And what are those simple vowels? How many are there? Level 1? Nine. Nine vowels are there. Right? So, what are they? To start with, the first one? Uh, uh, all of you can say. Uh. Uh, uh, what is it? Ucharanasthanam? Throat. Guttural is a sound which comes from the throat. Okay? Sound is called guttural. Ucharanasthanam is throat. So, ah, uh, and is it, sh now you can say, is it short or long? Short. What is the basis of this classification? One classification, simple and conjunct. Another classification, short and long. What is the basis? Based on the time taken to pronounce. If time taken is one unit of time, it is called short. If it takes two units of time, it is called long. Unit could be either this or just blinking up. No, blinking, just blinking. One second. So one second or two seconds. One minute, two minutes, if at all. If you give one minute for uttering a, uh, you give two minutes for uttering uh, the long vowel. Okay. So based on the time, short and long, based on the place of pronunciation, simple and conjunct. So the first vowel, a. Uh, so you all remember level one, right? A. Uh, yeah. Now, and the long form of a is. Ah. ah. Say. Ah. 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 So the place of pronunciation, throat. The sounds are called guttural. <coughs> then, see, there are five places available. 
from where the sound comes. At the time touching the different parts of your mouth, the five parts, you get different sounds. One is throat, other one is palate, other one is cerebral, other one the teeth, next one is lips. Five places are there, you get five sounds and five sounds are there in the form of vowels. The five sounds are a particular form. Now you have to connect the form with the sound. That is what you are going to do with the practice. The practice book, you write as many times as possible. Please do homework. Write uh, 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 as many times as possible. Write. I have written books and books, you know. My teacher used to, when he was doing my schooling, not now. Oh, what he will do? When he was in school, my teacher. I have written a uh, uh, uh. A teacher will dictate a uh, a uh, a. Uh. You have to write it correctly. So, so please practice. When you practice, you say it loudly. A uh, a uh, a. Uh. If you just mechanically write, then you would not be able to associate the sound with the form, right? So we are going to read also slowly, read words and sentences. Okay. Now a uh, a uh, is over and throat. The next letter is e. Say e. e. You know the place of pronunciation. What is that? Palate. Ucharana sthanam is palate. Is it short or long? Short. And the long form is e. e. Two mantras. So, throat, palate, over. Now the next one. U. By the by the pronunciation itself, we can by saying we can guess who. Ooh, rounding my lips, right? So therefore it is labial. Ooh. Is it short or long? Short. short. And the long form is ooh. These six letters at least you must know. A, A, E, E, O, O. Comes the next one. What is this? R. R. Say R. 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 Rishi. Ritam. Ritam. This is uh, like the sound in the English word uh, glycerin. That, that sound is that. R is that. Anyway, that is uh, take the Sanskrit word itself. Rishi or that, that, That's good. It is. See, we say cerebral. I don't know what cere cerebral is here. Cerebrum, cerebral. But cerebral is the. You can remember. You fold the tongue and touch the roof of your mouth. So touching the roof of your mouth, you say R. Maybe touching a slight uh, gap may be there. You are expelling, see, when you speak, what happens? You are expelling air, right? So, R, there is a space between the tongue and and the, the roof of the mouth. And when you expel air, you get the sound R. R. I, as I don't know, you have got an inbuilt flute in your mouth. Touch in different places, you get different sounds. So, R. For R, you have to fold your tongue. Touch the roof of your mouth. R. And you know how to write this? People write as they like. But yesterday I told you, step. Right? You follow the steps. Yeah. Somebody want to write? Yes. What is that? Okay. This is warm, not true. <laughs> write T. We extend this. A stroke. This. this is short. And the long form is you put one more. It becomes. To practice this. Okay. So you have to practice. <laughs> Only when you practice, you will remember. R. Say R. R. Yeah. Now the next one. What is the next one? Level 2? Level 2. Level 2 means uh, the, those students will answer. Yeah. Huh? Again? Current word. Huh? Little. <laughs> yeah, one, one person. Yeah. Huh? Okay. It is L only. Okay. It is L. L. Say L. L. There is no rapper sound. 
in the transliteration you will find L R something to, but it, it is L only. L. The tongue touches just above the upper teeth. L. Not L R and all. L R is uh, that L is that L R that that something L R. L. Is it short or long? Now level two. What is the long form of L? Double. <laughs> okay, just for joke, okay. I recommend you to be here then. <laughs> then I have a question. Yeah. If this is just real, then how do you say real rig? Sorry? Riluk. It is riluk. Riluk. Huh? That R in the transliteration, it is. Uh, it's not transliteration. Yeah, it is Riluk. Yeah, I even Riluk, not Rilruk. Okay. Okay, now, how many verbs are there? Simple verbs? Nine. Yeah, nine, right? How many short, how many long in this? Five short, five short, four long. In this, A, E, U, R, L. Five short verbs. And the long verbs, A, E, U, R, that's all. Now you know the place, places of pronunciation. Throat, the first one, then palate, then labial, then through the roof of the mouth, the next one, teeth. Right? The Uchana Stan. The knowledge of Uchana Stan is very important in the context of Sandhi and other applications also. So please remember this, it's very important. Then comes the conjunct. Conjunct means combination. Therefore, they are called Sanyukta Swaraha, otherwise called Nishya Swaraha. First letter is, what is that first one? A. A. Thank God, A. <laughs> it is A. Short or long? Short. short. <laughs> is it short or long? Long. There is no short A. Okay, it is a combination of throat, the sound coming from the throat and the palate. Therefore, guttural plus palatal. A. So, A is long and also a conjunct verbal. Then comes I. I. Level 1, uh, <coughs> you practice these letters minimum 25 times, okay? Write in your notebook. As much times possible, but I am just saying 25 number, okay? The idea is you must remember, when you write on the board, you will be able to recognize that. Okay, after that we will go to the consonants, lot of other, we will be saying conjunct consonants and all. So be familiar. <coughs> that orientation has to happen, no? That comes only by practice. Really, for the newcomers who don't know anything, for them. Actually, I am repeating again, okay? Yesterday what I thought, the same thing I am repeating. I repeat? No, 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 I am oh. repeating. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of some people, I am repeating again. Okay, no, okay. no problem. No problem. So, A, I, both are long, long conjunct, and the places of pronunciation are same. Guttural plus, uh, throat plus palate, that is guttural plus palate. Then comes O. O is what? O. o. Sound comes, starts from the throat, ends with the lips. So, guttural plus labial. Oh. Is it short or long? So, therefore, you know, all conjunct vowels are long vowels. The next one is au. So, a, i, o, au. How many conjunct vowels? Four. So, nine simple vowels, four conjunct vowels, total nine plus four, thirteen. Among them, how many simple vowels? Five. Which are five simple vowels? Five uh, uh, simple verbs, sorry, five short vowels happen to be simple vowels, right? So five short vowels and the balance eight are long vowels. All the conjunct vowels are long vowels. So two different ways of classification. One is based on pronunciation, other one based on matra, right? It's clear now? Yes? You remember the letters now? Okay, I'll give dictation later. Okay, now we will move on. So, whatever I said, the descriptions are there. Yes. The conjunct vowels begins 
with the sound of one vowel and ends with the sound of another vowel. It means the place, places of pronunciation are different. For example, A plus E. It's only uh, A plus E is the throat plus palate is A. The sound is A. So only A plus O. Throat plus lips becomes O. Then comes the, the other uh, other form, other uh, vowels, I mean not vowels, these are not considered to be part of it. That is, uh, 13 vowels are there and there is something called Bindu, Anuswara. Anuswara and Visarga. Anuswara and uh, level 1 students, you please get oriented to these words. Anuswara. Anuswara means the dot. The dot. It is there, right? That is the dot, Bindu. And Visarga is called. So, Visarga. Another name for Visarga is Visarjaniyaha. Visargaha, Visarjaniyaha. Two names are there, called. Right? This Anuswaraha and Visargaha cannot be pronounced, it doesn't, have, it doesn't stand alone. Right? What is the meaning of dot? Dot is a dot. So, now it's called. So, therefore, it always comes along with a verbal. It can be applied to all the verbals. And yesterday we saw, if Anuswara is applied to the letter, the verbal A, it becomes, the sound is Am. What is that? Am. And if it is A, Am. We just add the sound. <coughs> How do you get the sound of M? Just close your mouth and say, mm. Mm. That's a nasal. Am. Am. Next letter, E, Im, E, Um, U, Rum, Rum, Lum, A, I, Om, that is Om, right? That, uh, somebody asked yesterday what is Pratika? Om is a Pratika. Om, om. Pratika means sound symbol. Om. That is a pratika, sound symbol. Pratima is murti, form, physical form. So, pratika. Om, O with the, that bindu, anuswara. Om, if it is au, om. What is that? Om. One extra thing I am saying, it is not related to the class. Om is the combination of, I said, a, u, a plus u, that is guttural plus labial. Right? And mm, that, that sound, Makara sound is that mm sound. Om. Maximum three mantras, okay? You cannot drag it. Om. This, uh, in the tradition, I mean here, anybody can chant. There are some versions are there where, where they recommend for women to chant Om. Instead of Om, they say Om. They don't chant Om, they chant Om. How do you get Om? Aum with the Anuswara. The sound is Aum. Men will chant Aum. Women will chant Aum. It's <coughs> prescribed. Okay. Then, the Visarga. Now with the Visarga. A. The vowel A with the Visarga is? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The Visarga also throat. The sound of Visarga is also from the throat. Aum <coughs> when you say that vowel with the nose, the, the operation of, you know, the, the, the place of pronunciation of that particular vowel plus nose becomes am, am, im, um, and all. Visarga is the vowel, uh, what will be the place of pronunciation with that visarga. Visarga is throat. Say, aha. A plus the colon. You want me to write? Simple. A and Nisarga. Aha. And A plus Nisarga. Aha. Aha. What is that? Aha. That's why you say Rama, Ram, Rama, Aha. Right? E and Nisarga. E. Ihi. Short vowel E. Ihi. Harihi. E plus Nisarga. Ihi. O and Nisarga. O. O. Not O. 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 Short vowel O. U plus Visarga. Then R plus Visarga. R. 
the Sanskrit name, you will read it later. I will make you read, don't worry. So leave it now, no problem. Let us call it short vowels. The first vowel is A, we know. Then E, U, R, then L. Five short vowels, right? Then. And the long vowels are A, E, U, R, A, is it A? Okay. I, O, O. How many? Eight. Eight plus five, thirteen. Okay. Then the places of pronunciation will come, I think. Okay. Then, then uh, the time taken. The time taken to pronounce a short level is one unit. And therefore, the time taken to pronounce the long level will be two units. It could be a second or it could be any unit of time. And we have seen diphthongs. Diphthongs are nothing but conjunct vowels, another name. All conjunct vowels are long vowels. Ready? We have seen that. And there is something called pluta. Pluta. See, elongated vowels are those, it has more than two units of time. More than two units of time. Like uh, the akshara, om is there, right? This is om. Okay. Let me write like this because we are not seeing that. This is om. This om has got three units of time. And we have a name for that. The name for that is Pluta. Okay. Not Pluto. Pluta. P L U T A. Pluta. Why it is Pluta is the that is a different thing, okay? It is Bhaguvachma. It is uh, plural, plural form of Pluta. So don't worry about it. You can write P L U T A. That is vowels having more than two units of time. Are there any vowels like that? Vowels having more than two units of time? Have you studied any vowels? No, not there. What is in, in the Vedas are there? In the Vedas, when we chant, the chanting it is there. Om is there. Om is there and in the chanting there are matras where three vowels are there. In the Taitari Upanishad, the chantings are there. So when you when a vowel comes, you will give the a, a, a number three. It means the vowel should be elongated for three units of time. That is called Pruta. Okay. In the, in, the, in the language, spoken language it is not there. But in the Chanting is the Pluta, so don't worry about it. Two strokes is... Uh, that is different. That is uh, Dirga Svarita. In, for example, in Taitari Upanishad, that is Amrita Syana Bhai. That Na is Dirga only. Na, they elongate that. So, then... Uh, Come. So, in the Chaitra Upanishad, you will see in the um, second valley at the end, such Pruta uh, bubbles are there. Okay. Then, there is a shloka which gives the, this uh, timing, the matras. Eka matra means one unit. Eka matra is one unit of time. Which takes one unit of time? Short vowels. Dvi matra is that the vowels which take two units of time. What are they? What are they? Long vowels. And three matras. Just know this one. Pluta. Pluto is there but not Pluto. Okay. That is uh, because of the, the Sandhi and other things becomes Pluto. Pluto. Not Pluto. Pluto. But it is Pluta only. It's not a mistake. Okay. It's not a mistake in the slide that because of some other reason it has become Pluto. So three units of time, the vowels which take three, three units of time, they are called Pluta. And the consonants, they take half matra. So one, two, three, half. Can consonants be pronounced independently? No. That is why they are called consonants. Venjayati iti venjanam. Anvak bhavati iti venjanam. Swayam Rajate Iti Swaraha. Swaraha are those, vowels are those 
which can be pronounced independently and consonants depend on vowels for the pronunciation. Okay. So therefore, short vowels in Sanskritam it is called, you can write now, the English one is the H R A S V A H Hrasvaha. What is that? Hrasvaha, short vowels. And the long vowels are Dirgha. D I R G H A. Dirgha. Sanskrit name for short and long. And the vowels which take more than more than two, that is three units of time, they are called Pluta. P L U T A. Pluta. And consonants, they are called Vyanjanam. That also you can write V Y A N J A N A M with the diacritical marks as it is. This diacritical marks, as I told, it is, uh, it is uh, based on the ISO 15919 standard. So, Vyanjanam. We are not learning diacritical marks, we will learn directly the Sanskrita script. So, Eka Matro Bhavet Prasvaha, Dimatro Dirgha Vuchate, Trimatra Stuplato Yeyaha, Vyanjanam Chardha Matrakam. The shloka tells how many matras the, the letters of Sanskritam takes. One, two, three, half. One, short vowel, two, long, three is pruta, half is consonants. And consonants is what we are going to see today. So, up to this half an hour, already what we have seen yesterday, we have seen. So, I hope uh, your doubts will be clear. If anybody has any doubt in yesterday's class, I hope it will be clear. If you have any doubt, don't be shy, please ask. Shall we move further? Yes. Okay, okay just a quick summary. A, E, U and R, they are long vowels. I, sorry, A, I, O and O are long and conjunct vowels. And summary, quick summary. There are 13 plus 2 vowels and vowels are classified into simple and conjunct vowels. Simple vowels are 9 in number, you can see, and conjunct vowels 4. Another way of classification based on the time is short and long. Short vowels 5, long vowels 8. That's it. Other two points already we have seen. And all conjunct vowels are long vowels. That's all. And the Ucharana Sthanam, if you want to write, you can write A and A, they are from throat, therefore they are called gutturals. E and E, palate, therefore palatals. U and U, lips, therefore labials. R and R, cerebrum, therefore cerebrals. L is teeth, dental. A and I, throat plus palate. O and O, throat plus lips. It is throat followed by palate. Throat followed by lips, not the other way. Okay. Then. Okay. Already I have done this. Then. Here you can see the uh, how the tongue touches up different places of your mouth and sound is produced. Cut it. That sound is produced from the throat. A. Uh, A. Uh. Right. E. E. You can see the tongue. That touches uh, the palate. It doesn't touch actually, there will be a slight gap will be there, but it is in parallel with the palate. The red color indicates the tongue, the picture. Then, who, who lips? The upper lip touches the lower lip. Not uh, touches, it is not really touching. It touches also, you get the sound, mm, but it not touching, it is rounding, rounding your lips. If the lips touch, then you will not get any sound. All the sounds are absorbed, withdrawn. Right? That's why we start, oh, when you say, start from opening the mouth and closing the mouth. Mm, right? So, not touching, rounding. Upper lip and both, uh, lower lip, both are used in its pronunciation. That is what labial is. Then, r and r. The tongue touches the, the roof of your mouth. So the tongue is curly in this position.
then comes l. The tongue touches just above the upper teeth. So now again coming back to Varnamala. Varnamala, you know, the garland of letters. It is divided into vowels and consonants. Vowels we have seen. Now we will see consonants. How many consonants are there? Level two. I'm just taking some name, okay? I'm not exposing anyone, okay? Just take it accordingly. Uh, just want to know, yeah. Level one. Level one. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're sitting here, right? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. It's a random number. Yeah. How many consonants are there? Anybody in level two? How, how many are in level two? I just. Thirty-three. There are thirty-three consonants. You can write. There are thirty-three consonants. And they are called in Sanskrit Vyanjanani. Vyanjana. Vyanjanam you wrote before, right? Vyanjanam means consonant. Vyanjanani consonants. Plural. Vyanjanam singular. Vyanjanani plural. Please write. Yeah. And uh, you would have bought the books, right? Uh, for practice. Please practice. Your visual. And what is that uh, Paninian notation for verbals? Remember? Achaha. Similarly, for consonants, we have the Paninian notation. They are called? Halaha. What is that? You can write. H A L A H, not halaha, okay? Halaha. What is that? Halaha. See, not Allah. Halaha. Between a and ha, the sound is, there is a difference. Both are from the throat, but there is a difference. Halaha. Halaha. Achaha. Achaha, you see, achaha. What is that? The bubble in the last bubble, achaha. Achaha. What is the last bubble there? Last bubble is not. Visarga is there. Before the visarga, achaha, cha, cha. What is that? A is there. A with the visarga, achaha. When you hear, aha is there. The bubble a with the visarga is there, right? Achaha. Similarly, halaha. Okay, so consonants are called Venjana, Venjanam or Halaha, Venjanani or Halaha. So now we will see the consonants. A, a pure consonant, a, con, a pure consonant cannot be pronounced independently. It, it is always accompanied by a vowel. Okay, but there are uh, we will see, there are places where you will see pure consonant, but there will be a vowel at the end. Though a consonant followed by other consonant, you will see a vowel at the end of all the consonants. You will be seeing it later. Pure consonant is that which doesn't have any vowel appended to it. Therefore, it cannot be pronounced independently. So, therefore, the vowels can be pronounced independently and the consonants cannot be pronounced independently. I have written some, something in Sanskrit. That is, Yesham Varnanam Ucharnam Satantram Nabhavati Te Vinjanami Idi Katyante. Those Varnas which can be pronounced independently, they are called, they are called Swaraha vowels and that which cannot be pronounced independently, they are called Vyanjanani, consonants. Okay. So therefore, we can compare vowels to the life and consonants to the body. So without vowels, there is no life to the consonant. And Sanskrite Pancha Vimshatihi Varga Vyanjanani Navacha Avarga Vyanjanani Santi. What is that? We will see. We are going to see the next slide. So consonants. Classification of consonants. Important. 
pay attention here. These vowels are simple, we have seen. Now consonants. Brief classification. Consonants are classified into basically uh, into two, two types. You can write later, you can listen. Two types. One is class consonants, other one non-class consonants. Class, non-class. Class means group. Group consonants and the consonants which are not group, ungrouped consonants. Class, non-class. Right? Basically, consonants are classified into class consonants and non-class. Among the non-class consonants, they are classified into starting from number 2, semi-vowels, sibilance, and the last one, soft aspirate is there, that is also sibilant only. So, non-class consonants are classified into semi-vowels and sibilance. If you want, you can write. Don't write literally what is there in the slide. Certain things I am changing. It's not a mistake. Just, you can write. Consonants can be classified into class consonants and non-class consonants. And non-class consonants can be further classified into semi-vowels and sibilants. So, how many classifications are there now? Class consonants, semi-vowels and sibilants. These are the only three classifications. Right? Understand? Any doubt in this? Yes? No? You said non-class consonants. Sorry. I tell you, that's why I said don't see the slide. Don't write now I say. This is my mistake. I will not show that. Okay. Listen, consonants are classified into class consonants and non-class consonants. Basically, they are classified in this way. And non-class consonants are further classified into semi-vowels and sibilants. Right? So, now, how do you say, what, what, is, the class, what, are, what is the classification of consonant now? Consonants can be classified into class consonant, semi-vowels and sibilants. Right? I can say, right? Class consonant, non-class consonant, and the non-class they have sibilants and semi-vowels. Now I am saying class consonants, semi-vowels and sibilants. Three. Among the sibilants, among the sibilants, there are four sibilants, we will see that. Among the sibilants, there is a classification. Classified into soft and hard. Soft and hard. The sibilants are classified into soft and hard. What is soft, what is hard, we will see. It is not in terms of touch. Okay. Soft and hard. You can write now soft and hard. You will see it later what it is. That is what I have given in this slide. Now you will see, you will understand. Whatever I told, I have put it in a different way here. Consonants can be classified into class consonants. How many class consonants are there? Five are there. Therefore, five class consonants. I am giving the number now. I said class consonants. How many class consonants? Five. Five groups are there. So, consonants consists of five group consonants and the semi-vowels, sibilants. Sibilants, I said soft and hard. So, this sibilants, that is number three, they are hard. And the next one is soft. It's clear? No? Okay, I'll repeat again. Class consonants, uh, sorry, consonants classified into class consonants and non-class -class consonants. This you understand all of you? Group, see you are grouping the consonant. Grouping uh, based on a particular, based on the place of pronunciation. Based on the similarity of pronunciation. You are grouping the consonant. Group, it, group consonants and ungrouped consonants. Group, ungroup. Class, non-class, both mean the same. Right? How many class, how many groups are there? Five groups are there. Therefore, five class consonants. That is the number one. And number two, 
non class concepts they are semi verbals sibilants among the sibilants we have a further division soft and hard soft is there hard is there right now you understand yes okay the five class consonants i said no five group consonants that five groups are there within each group there are five consonants within each group how many consonants five so how many class consonants will be there five groups and each group having five therefore 25 how many consonants in total 25 minus 33 that will come under non class consonants simple right so class consonants 25 non class consonants 8 right so total 33 and among the non class consonants there are four semi verbs forget about the sanskrit name we will see that later among the non class consonants there are four semi verbs and four sibilants four semi verbs and four sibilants and among the sibilants there are three hard and one soft just know this we will see in detail one by one it comes later so this is the the classification of consonants now let me ask you how many class how many consonants in total how the consonants are classified how many class consonants are there how many i mean how many groups five groups how many consonants in each group five therefore how many consonants in total in the class consonants and how many non class consonants eight how are they divided semi semi how many semi vowels four four and how many sibilants three three plus one and three are hard and one is soft that's all <coughs> clear yeah now this class consonant five class consonants or the class consonant has got a sanskrit name you can write varga vyanjanani vyanjanani you know what does it mean consonants varga means class this is a varga this is a varga class so class consonants v a r g a that varga vyanjanani class consonants you remember i said i said something that a uh, dharma opposite of dharma akshara akshara avastha okay that leave it you can say that a by okay that also you can do it fine so this is dharma adharma akshara akshara now varga vyanjanani class consonants now non class consonant how do you say avarga vyanjanani my voice is clear avarga vyanjanani you add a before that becomes non class this a is like like uh, the prefix in english un friend and unfriend same the same right. so varga vyanjanani avarga vyanjanani already we saw we saw that class consonants varga vyanjanani non class avarga vyanjanani not in the slide so you have to write it okay and semi vowels are called in sanskritam antastaha what is that all of you say antastaha loudly antastaha 